In terms of the OCI acquisition and the amount that you spent on it, um, you know, analysts worry whether uh, this is the most prudent strategy at this stage versus, let's say, doing a buyback. And so how do you think about that? Yeah, look, we do quite a bit of modeling on both. Um, we considered both of those options. Uh, but when we looked at the opportunity that OCI presented, and again, this was a transaction that was triggered by the seller, uh, this opportunity allows us to, in many ways, leapfrog ahead of other players in the low-carbon ammonia space. Uh, it gives us product that we can sell into the market starting in 2026 when the CCS comes online. Uh, and we firmly believe that low-carbon ammonia is going to attract a premium price as uh, Europe as Asian nations uh, work to tackle this question of climate change, um, they're going to need ammonia to meet basic power needs uh, to provide an alternate lower carbon fuel for shipping uh, and as a hydrogen carrier. So the opportunity was really too good to pass up. And so how do you convince, Meg, your shareholders of this opportunity? Because in April, back in April, uh, you know, uh, the investors of Woodside actually voted down your climate plan. And so how do you convince them this is the right way forward? And how value accretive could this deal be? Yeah, well, first and foremost was making sure that the opportunity was value accretive. And so we stress tested the uh, investment opportunity with OCI before we submitted the bid. Um, we've got confidence that it will be a highly profitable asset and meet our capital allocation framework um, targets for investment rate of return. Um, and it delivers a significant step forward on our climate ambition. Um, it's been interesting as we've reflected with shareholders following the vote on the Climate Transition Action Plan. Most of the shareholders who voted against voted against because they wanted to see greater ambition. Well, with the OCI Clean Ammonia Project acquisition, I think we're demonstrating that ambition and we're doing it in a way that's good for our shareholders. Right. And so what does your long-term energy transition plan look like? More such acquisitions, more in organic growth opportunities? Um, look, organic growth has been the, the base plan that we've been pursuing, and we still continue to see merit in organic growth opportunities. We have opportunities here in Australia, for example, that are very much targeting the Asian customers um, who buy our LNG today. So we will continue to work on those organic opportunities. But the thing that's been really great about the OCI acquisition is it's opened uh, a number of doors to companies who previously would have said, well, look, Woodside, you're one of about 10 companies that are coming to talk to me about paper ammonia projects. Now we have a real ammonia project. Um, the customers actually are very interested in talking to us today.